Hey guys, so we're back on Emacs for yet another video and this time we're going to uh, kind of build on top of that and I'm going to present something that's very important I think for kind of overall enjoyment I would say of Emacs because really it's a very complex thing and uh, you really want to understand how it works at the bare minimum in order to kind of improve on it if you really want. Of course you can always use kind of pre-made uh, kind of configurations but then it's also I think that one of the joys of using Emacs is knowing how to deal with it and knowing how to tinker with it to improve and customize the way you want. Now just as a reminder we have first set up kind of EVO mode on this Emacs installation so essentially we can move about using the kind of the HJK and L keys and we can also use the forward slash for example to search forwards the kind of a question mark to search backwards. We can even use ex type commands down here. So this is all well and good. And this is the first episode. On the second episode, we set up Helm. So Helm is a very nice package that um, integrates well with the rest of Emacs in such a way that it's, I, uh, I would uh, imagine that this should be Emacs, kind of Emacs's default behavior because it really integrates so well with Emacs. And it gives such a nice functionality that I prefer to give it kind of a, on the beginning of this series because it's going to be useful down the line. So this time we're going to tackle documentation and how to look at the manual, how to learn on your own. Because really I can I can show you most of the key bindings, but uh, more often than not you're going to forget some of them. And you're going to have to deal with a limited amount of things that you remember. So we, I'll try to show you how to kind of uh, look for stuff in an educated way and how to approach uh, problems if you face anything on Emacs. So the first thing that you have about uh, Emacs is you have kind of a Vim Tutor-ish thing, which is uh, which op opens up if you press Control H and then T. And uh, this is the Emacs tutorial. So I wouldn't recommend that you do it necessarily. You can maybe do the first few sections uh, because again, this is essentially Vim Tutor. So you're going to learn kind of how to paste, how to yank how to yank stuff, but really you already know that because you're using EVO mode. So you're using the VM key bindings instead of the Emacs's, instead of Emacs's key bindings. So really the tutorial is something that you can skip on, but there are other useful things that you can find. So for example, if you press Control H, Control A, this opens up this about Emacs page. And one of the cool little items that there's there is the Emacs guided tour. This kind of curls in a web page, so you need to give me a few seconds for it to kind of load stuff in. And then you kind of go through this as if it were a normal buffer. And you can, and there's images and stuff. There's a little bit of a kind of a demo for Emacs. So you can see some of the features again, if you're approaching this kind of for the first time. And uh, yeah, uh, with regards to, again, kind of a little demo, that's what you can do. So there's several interesting features of Emacs. For example, you can play, even play Tetris. And this is shown, something that I shown earlier. Now, this is all well and good. Well, well, another useful thing is that you have the manual. So the complete manual for Emacs is kind of built in the editor, essentially. You can either download it kind of in a PDF format from the internet, but you can also quite simply read it directly inside the editor. And you can do so by pressing Control H and then R. This opens up uh, this kind of manual and the manual is contained in what is called an info mode buffer. Now, info mode for Emacs is essentially the mode, uh, the mode that essentially manages kind of uh, manuals. So in this case, you can see that I have some spe specific key bindings for it. I can press tab in order to kind of uh, move between different uh, the different hyperlinks. So I can press enter on top of any one of those to follow the hyperlink. And I can also go backwards by pressing control shift, uh, excuse me, shift tab. And another useful feature of the manual, and uh, I think that the one that's the most useful anyway, is the G. In fact, if you press the G key inside the in an info buffer, you get kind of the info go to node. Uh, and this is also improved by Helm because you kind of have a list of all the sections that exist. So really what this allows you is it allows you to browse the sessions of the manual. So let's say that I want to learn what is a buffer on Emacs. I can start pressing buffer. And I have kind of a several different, uh, uh, several different entries for buffers. So, for example, there, there's an entry for using multiple buffers. I can do the same thing for maybe frames. So, what are frames? 
uh, so if you want to learn any of those things, again, the Emacs manual is very well written there. Uh, not only it's written in good English, but it's written in a way that it gives you a very short description and then it goes directly to the useful stuff. So it shows you the commands and uh, it, it even gives you cool ideas on what can be done with the commands. So if you have the time and if you want to tinker around, uh, do read the manual, open up maybe a random part and just start uh, playing around with it. With it. Uh, this is the manual. So another interesting thing that Emacs has is the capability to essentially describe anything. And on a previous video, I already mentioned that describing on Emacs essentially is kind of showing the manual. So really, uh, I have options to describe, for example, functions or describe variables. Again, Emacs is kind of built on top of Lisp. So you can use this to browse, for example, all the Lisp functions that compose Emacs. And you can do so by pressing Ctrl H and then F. And this is going to ask you for a function to describe. So notice that since I'm using Helm, I also get a list of all the functions and I can fuzzy match for each function. So if I want to describe an evil mode function, for example, I can start typing in evil and then Helm kind of does the sorting here. So let's say that I want to know how evil sort works. I, I open up the manual page here on the right and then it kind of gives a brief overview. It depends on how the developers did it. Some of the developers do not, uh, uh, do not kind of um, comment their code. So really there's not so much documentation, but what you always have is kind of a link to the definition in Lisp. So in fact, I can look at the source code if I want. And uh, usually they put, a, they put a few comments. This comment is actually what appears on the manual. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can describe variables as I was saying. So you do this by pressing control H and then V. And uh, again, this works the same way as a function. So I can browse any of those. If I look at an evil mode variable, for example, if I look at the evil state, so this is the current evil state against some documentation and a link to the um, kind of, to the definition of it and also some interesting other things. So here it does a uh, list, it does a kind of a link that goes to the function that manipulates the state, etc. So another thing that uh, evil, uh, sorry, another thing that uh, kind of Emacs allows you to do is you can also search for packages. So you can describe a package by pressing control H and then uppercase P. And you're giving up again a prompt to choose a package. So let's say that I want to describe the use package package. I just uh, type that in and notice that what I get is kind of a, a little description of the, uh, of the package. So I see that it's installed. I get the location of it kind of a in memory and uh, I also get kind of a link again to the GitHub page in this case. So some tags again, the requirements. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a simplified again version. So you have noticed already that we've been using control H type commands a lot. And this is essentially the, the mo uh, these are essentially the most important commands again when it comes to getting help. So really if you press control H, control H, you, all, you actually get a help on the help system. So it kind of gives you an overview of what of the different types of commands that you can do. So if you press control H, control H, you get help on help. And then it gives you kind of different uh, patterns that you can feed it after you press control H the first time. Um, what else? So finally, you have been noticing that we had kind of a mini buffer popping down here from time to time. If I press control H right now and don't finish the command, you'll notice that we get kind of this little list and what provides this is essentially which key. So which key is a very useful package if you're learning, especially because it allows, it uh, helps you complete commands that you have not finished essentially. So in this case, I have uh, press control H and then there are several commands that continue uh, from there. So in fact, it's just printing all of the possible commands that I can, uh, that I can execute beginning with control H. So it gives the uh, kind of the key binding and uh, it gives me again the name so if i was telling that you can get help for help for example with control h control h notice that there is this kind of control h here key so if i press control h a second time then i get to that prompt that we saw before mm, and how to install it so i'm going to go to my india.org and it's very simple so we're using use package again and the uh, use package is just a little macro to install uh, packages in a more descriptive way. So I'm installing which key 
and uh, you just need to ensure that it's installed and then like you can also configure it if you want so for example it you need to set it up uh, by using this this function this is the minimum that you need this is which key mode essentially enables which key so that you get this behavior for example when you press uh, when you press a command and don't finish it another useful one is the which key setup mini buffer now if you run this function what this does is it sets your kind of which key prompt to appear at the bottom on the mini buffer which is this part right here of emacs and uh, there are other setups so you can either press uh, put it on the left or on the right and i'll let you guys use the documentation system to discover uh, which function does that on your own and another useful variable is the which key idle delay so this is essentially the time that which key waits before prompting you with that little kind of a prompt on the uh, on the bottom i myself like a, the, a relatively small delay because i type things very fast so usually if i don't finish the command it's because i want to see the completion and uh, th that's pretty much it in terms of configuration again it, it doesn't require too much in terms of uh, babysitting so this is a very nice package and before we go, another final useful thing that we have is what we what we call Helm apro uh, apropos. And uh, in fact, uh, apropos is essentially kind of a command on Emacs that allows you to describe functions as well. And Helm has an interface or a Helmized version of this command, which is called again Helm uh, apropos. So I just rebound it to the to the default apropos command. And if I press Control H A. It's essentially the same thing as describing. So I'm, uh, I can, for example, search for, I don't know, this enable theme one, and I get the manual for it. Again, this is just another nice little thing that Helm provides. So really for this video, that's pretty much it. Uh, all of this kind of configuration is on GitHub. You can notice that I changed a, a bit the setup of stuff for my last Helm video, but I think it's kind of intuitive. Again, I can put some more stuff on the readme if you want. But uh, this should be enough again for this first uh, for this first three episodes. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.